Yo, yo, peeps, how y'all feeling today? It's me, Daily Growth Yoga, Marcus Stanbeck, taking over BBO today. Shout out to Black Boys Own for giving me this opportunity to tap in with y'all. And today, we're just doing a little bit of fundraising, y'all. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know all the initiatives that Black Boys Own has going on. One of the ones that I'm more passionate about just because I kind of do this a lot of this work in my own um, in my own career as a yoga teacher, you could say, is this initiative to get mindfulness, meditation and yoga into schools for children that look like us. And I think it's a really powerful initiative It's some of the work that I do here in Baltimore City is teaching yoga to young black men in Baltimore City schools. And I appreciate that Black Boys Home has kind of taken that initiative taking um kind of taking up the task of saying hey this is something important but it's something that we're gonna have to bring to ourselves bring to our own communities so that's what i'm here to teach for today it's a supporting supportive fundraising class i appreciate y'all tapping in i see all the waves hopefully y'all about to ready to join for this flow we're gonna do a functional movement flow so if you follow my page you see that i've been sharing a lot more content about functional movement lately um, and if you have a yoga practice or any sort of movement practice, whether you do CrossFit, climb, run, lift weights, whatever type of stuff you like to do, or you're a, a whole athlete, like still participating in some professional form, or even younger, you know, high school, college, all those things. This will be helpful to develop a full movement profile. We'll work on putting muscles in positions where they're going to be in a stretch position, but we're going to put them under stress that will create strength and stability in a longer range of motion that can be helpful for most of us as far as we, you know, grow older, move, continue to explore movement. If we want to be able to do more or at least be able to do more safely with less chance of injury. This is the type of class that I would recommend. This is what I use it for. This is what I teach it to people for. So hopefully it'll be helpful for, to you today. Props wise, two blocks are helpful. I, I don't think I can. Ooh, can I? I can play music. I have music that I can play that I know the person that has the rights and I don't think will get kicked off. So I'm gonna I'm test it. I didn't think about that before because normally it's a no-go for the music on IG Live, but I think today we can make an exception. So all those of you who are joining me, you got like 60 more seconds while I boot up my laptop and get connected with my music to get ready. Two blocks, gonna be helpful. And we're actually gonna start off standing up. So when you're ready, you could just meet me standing at the top of your mat. Of course, I turned my laptop all the way off. So I'm gonna need that whole 60 seconds to get booted up. up everybody i see a handful of people still signed on about to get started in just a second i'm getting our music set up excuse me for being slightly unprepared but we'll be starting in just a few seconds here get us kicked off of IG Live. All right, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and get started. Once my computer catches up to all the things I'm trying to do at one time. Vamos. Oh. 
Sometimes technology is my friend, and sometimes I just want to throw it all away. Okay, come to the top of your mat. Start with your feet. So the first thing about functional movement that I'll bring up for us today is how we use our feet to engage everything that's supported above our feet. Lift all your toes up. And if you've never tried this before, like, imagine that it's possible. Try to take a deep breath and then lift all your toes up. Now just while you have your toes lifted, notice the four points of your feet under your big toe mound, under your pinky toe mound, and the two sides of your heels. You can feel your ability to push between those four points on each of your feet and balance, maybe to some degree, maybe to a very small degree. But if you feel the ability to balance on your feet with your toes up, I want you to keep your toes lifted, turn your palms forward, stand up tall. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, close your eyes or rest them towards the floor. Breathe in deeply. And exhale completely a few more times. The next time you inhale, lift your arms up. Keep your toes lifted. And exhale, fold over your legs. Now you're looking at your toes. See if you're looking at your toes. Can you lower your big toes down to the ground? Just your big toe. If it's hard, bend your knees a little more. Bring blocks under your hands or just bring your hands to the floor. Bend your knees enough to touch your hands to something. Big toes down and then lift all your toes up. And then lower your big toes down again. And lift your toes up. If it's brand new, you might feel like a cramp coming on. That's okay, that's very normal. Try it one more time, big toes down. Hold your big toe down. Try to push weight into your outer heels. And see if you feel that engagement up to your hips and does it allow you to fold forward more. Let your head be heavy. And slowly inhale, stand up. Try to keep your feet engaged. So I didn't lower my other toes. They're still floating. Your other toes can lower. Try to keep weight in your big toe mounds and in your outer heels at the same time and see if you can feel your feet activating. This is something that'll go a long way for us today or in any type of movement where you're squatting and your feet are on the ground. Inhale, lift your arms up and grab opposite elbows over your head. As you exhale, side bend to the right, push down into your left foot. Inhale, come back up. Exhale to the left. Inhale, come up. And exhale, twist to your right. Reach your right arm back and your left arm forward. Inhale, come up. Back to center. Exhale to the left. Left arm back, right arm forward. Now see if the feet can stay engaged through all of this and inhale, turn back forward. As you exhale, lower your arms. Take a glance back down at your feet. Relax for a second and then lift your toes again. Lower your big toes. Press down to your outer heels. If you feel like you've like gotten that down like well enough where you can actually find it each time, see what happens if you try to push your pinky toes down towards the mat. And if you can get the mound under your pinky where it connects the rest of your foot to meet the mat and get heavy, push down through your inner heels. And now the four corners of your feet are rooted down into your mat. If you've got some engagement of that, once you get that on, push your feet down. Try to tear your yoga mat in two pieces. Your feet won't move. Your yoga mat is sticky. But try to push them apart and feel how that engages up to your hips. At the same time, gently squeeze your thighs together. So your legs are called co-contracting now. They're squeezing in and pressing apart at the same time. Draw your low belly in, engaging your core. Draw your ribs in to rest over your low belly. Turn your palms forward till you feel your shoulder blades rest on your back. And draw your chin back to bring your ears right over your shoulders. Mountain pose. Inhale, lift your arms up. Try to keep your feet and your legs engaged as you exhale, fold forward. As you push the feet apart, maybe you notice that you can fold further more easily. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Reach your chest forward. And as you exhale, take a fold again. Take your feet wide to the edge of your mat. Turn your toes out slightly. Keep pushing your feet apart and take your hips back. Come down into your yogi squat and as you push your feet apart let that activate your hips so you don't sink all the way to the bottom so if you easily come down to the bottom and you're like oh i can do this all day push your feet apart enough that your hips lift about an inch and if you usually have challenge getting down very low push your feet apart see if you can keep your back straight and reach your hips back in space to come a little lower it's an experiment y'all wherever you end up we're gonna let ourselves come down to our butt, so just have a whole seat. And once you have a whole seat, we're gonna adjust to bring the right leg in front of us and the left leg over to our left for a 90-90 seat. Now this is like some of the spicier work, but some of the most helpful stuff I think I've learned in the past year. Take your right shin and make it parallel to the short edge of your yoga mat. Make your right thigh parallel to the long edge of your yoga mat. Flex your foot. And your thigh should come right out of your hip, so you have like a 90 degree angle now. So if you see my thigh is lined up to the long edge, short edge, foot flex is now lined up to the long edge. I'm gonna do the same thing with my back leg so that my back thigh is lined up to the short edge. Back shin lined up to the long edge, and my foot is lined up to the short edge. Once I'm there, Use your right hand to help yourself squeeze your right ribs in and try to sit right over top of your pelvis. Try to sit right over top of your hips. And now press down through your front and back knee as well as your front and back ankle so your shins get heavy. Once you feel your front hip pressing down to the ground, take an inhale and exhale, fold over your right shin. Now, if you feel like you can sit over your hips pretty easily, you can do this with no hands. Bring your hands to your chest and inhale to press your way back up, no matter whether you're using your hand or not. Exhale, fold forward. Your hand is there to help you sit over your hips and keep your right side body squeezing in. So if you feel like you're leaning like this, use your hand, squeeze it in. You'll get more out of your hips mobility-wise, and eventually you might build to a point where you need no hands. Also respect the fact that the two sides are different. So if this is your weaker or tighter side, this could be the spot where it's like, okay, I need a hand on this side. Maybe the other side I'll try with no hand. Take your chest full one more time on an inhale. And stay here for your exhale. All right, we're gonna walk our hands around to our right and bring our right forearm to the ground. Shout out to Action Hero for this one. This is one of the ones I picked up from him and I find it super helpful for strength and active range of motion for your external rotation in your hips. So we're gonna keep the knee on the ground to the best of our ability. Try to just pick your foot up. Right foot's gonna lift. And now if you feel like it was really easy, bring your left hand to your right side body, pull it away from the ground. Really get your spine to be as straight as possible. See if you can pick your foot up now. Is that more or less challenging? And then can you pick up your whole shin? Ooh, spicy. Lower it down. All right. Ooh. Now active external rotation. Focus on your back foot for a moment. Keep squeezing your right side body away from the ground. Pick your back foot up. How high can you lift it? Flex your foot. Imagine you're trying to kick your heel forward. And then maybe you come up to your hand, but keep your side body squeezed in. Maybe you could even get up high on your fingertips. Lower your back foot. Relax for a second. Whoosh. And then from this side, here's a little transition I like to use where we're gonna do a little bit of just passive, a more passive stretch in between. And if this passive stretch is like a no-go for you, there's options and ways you can do it. So the way that I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna take my left shin, cross it in front of me, Place it on top of my right shin and come into logs on a fire. Now, one other way to do this, you could take your right foot to the ground and do a seated figure four, 
same hip stretching. Or you can even come all the way down to the ground, figure four like this on your back. So we have options there. Wherever you're taking your option, try to straighten your spine. So if you're lying down, straighten your spine against the ground. If you're sitting up, root down through your sit bones. Lift your chest away from the ground. Try to find your belly, ribs, and chest right over your hips. And then try to get both hips onto the ground. So that might mean sitting on a blanket. That might mean just a little spread of the hip bones. Now from this seat, we're gonna switch sides from where we were. So our left leg is gonna end up in front, right leg is gonna end up behind us. All you gotta do is slide your right leg out from under your left leg, whatever position it's in, and take your right leg over to the side, find your 90 degree angles. So your left hip and left thigh will line up to the long edge of your mat. Left shin lines up to the short edge. Right thigh lines up to the short edge. Right shin lines up to the long edge. Flex both of the feet. Press down through your knees. Press down through your ankles. Now this is my weaker side. So this is the side where I really have a, more of a lean, as you can see. Now as I press down through my hips, I'm able to pull myself over my pelvis. And on a good day, like which today feels like it is, I can stay pretty, pretty upright and go with no hands. On some days, I'm using my hand like this. So inhale, press your shin down, and exhale, fold forward. Feel the stretch, especially if this is the tight side. Inhale, press your way up. As you push down through your shin, you use your active hip to press your way up. Exhale, fold. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale up. Exhale, fold one more time. Inhale. Exhale, stay up. And then we're gonna inhale, reach our chest out over our leg. Exhale, take it down. Walk yourself around to your left forearm this time. Squeeze your left side body away from the floor. Press down into your left knee. Lift your left foot up if you can. And even if you can't, just use the most effort you could to try. Feel your hip work. It might burn a little bit. And then pick up your whole shin if you can. Keep the left side body squeezing in away from the floor. And let your whole left shin come down. Woo. Work. All right, left side body squeezes away from the floor. Right foot is gonna lift up behind us. Shoot. Try to lift it high, kick the heel up and forward. Maybe come up to your hand. Keep squeezing the side body in so you feel the internal rotation of the back hip. Maybe get up to your fingertips. Oof. Spicy on this side for me. And relax. All right. Now from here, same way we transition forward on the other side. Press down through your front shin and knee. Lift your back leg up. And maybe you come shin crossed over shin. Maybe you come figure four. Maybe that's lying down. Whatever option works for you. This is where like sometimes not being able to see y'all makes it challenging on the IG Live class, but I just treat it like I'm recording a video. So hopefully one of those three options works. If not, hit me up in the DMs. I'll come up with another option that will hopefully work for you. I try to create accessible yoga for pretty much anyone who would decide they want to get on the mat. I actually created a new t-shirt. Is the yoga accessible or no? I think that's an important question we should be asking as we enter yoga spaces and as the yoga industry moves forward. So that's kind of one of my things that I've embraced as a topic for conversation. When I'm talking to you like this, that's usually a distraction in case you're on your tight side, feeling the stretch right now. Sit up tall, breathe deep. And I guess not a distraction, it's really a point of presence to bring us present to what's going on, but also maybe not have us wallow in the deeper sensation. If it's a little bit much, always feel free to take a little rest, take a little break, take a child's pose. Cause even stuff like this can get, you know, taxed on the body, sometimes the rest is needed. So do what you need. Uncross your legs. 
plant your feet in front of you. And now we're gonna bring the soles of the feet together, take your knees wide. And we got a couple versions of this that we can do. We're gonna start with the hands behind this version. Push your feet into one another, press your knees apart, and then push your feet into one another and press your feet apart and try to find a happy balance between the two. Lift your hips off the ground. Straight arms behind you, press your hips forward. Squeeze your core in, let your hips come down, and now come down to your forearms. Keep your core squeezed in, Lift your hips again, keep pressing your knees apart, pushing your feet into one another. Take a deep breath, and relax your hips down. Lower all the way down to your back. If you want it to be more challenging, lift your arms alongside your ears. Press your feet together, push down through your feet, lift your hips. Keep your knees as wide apart as you can. Breathe slowly and deeply. Try to take complete exhales, so breathing all the way out, and deep inhales. And slowly relax. Bring your knees into your chest, and just make some large circles with your knees. Letting your upper thigh bone, called your femur bone, move in your hip sockets. Change directions with your circles. take the feet down to the mat wider than the mat so it might be just off the edges let your arms relax out to a T and just let your knees windshield wiper left to right now letting the upper thigh bone the femur bone rotate inside your hip sockets so the wider your feet go the more that rotation you feel for most of us to each side just a couple more times as we start to wind ourselves down okay bring your knees back up through center once you get your knees back up we are going to hug the knees into our chest, wrap our arms around our legs. Now straighten your right leg to the ceiling. Straighten your left leg out on the floor in front of you. Hold your right leg either at the hamstring, so under your knee, calf, above your knee, or maybe you're reaching up towards your ankle or big toe. If you do reach to the foot, See if you can activate your foot by spreading your toes and push through your big toe mound like we did when we were standing on the ground. As you push, straighten your right leg and then push your big toe on your left foot forward to straighten your left leg. And this little active stretch, gently press your right leg forward into your hands. So you feel your hamstring have to work a little bit, even though you're still in a stretched position. Keep breathing slow. Don't cut your breath short. Fill it up. And now relax your right leg. See if it'll come in any closer. Maybe it will, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it just feels a little better to release and relax it. Maybe your hands walk up a little higher. Those are the options. Bend your right knee, pull your left knee back into your chest. Straighten your left leg to the ceiling, straighten your right leg out in front of you. Same thing, clasp behind your left leg, probably the same spot that you clasp behind your right leg. Press through both of your big toes so that the legs straighten up. Left leg reaches up to the ceiling, right leg reaches forward on the floor in front of you. As your breath deepens, press your left leg forward into your hands. Let your hamstring activate in a stretched position. 
not gonna look like much. You'll feel it more than you see it. With your next exhale, relax your left leg. See if it will come in any closer. Maybe your hands walk up a little higher. Bend your left knee into your chest. Bring your right knee back in. And then we're gonna find a happy baby. Reach your elbows inside your knees. Grab the outer ankles, shins, or outer edges of your feet and pull your heels to be right above your knees for happy baby. Bottoms of your feet face up. Try to pull your hips back down to the ground. If they lift it off, you can rock left to right to get a soothing sensation. Help this feel a little better. Once you've rocked forward and back enough times, Find yourself in a still position in the center. And as you come to your still center, you happy baby. Start to rest onto your back, release your legs. Let your arms rest at your sides. Give yourself space too. And by space, I mean take up space with your body. Don't be afraid to take your feet wider. Reach your arms out more. Find a position that feels restful. And then take one more deep breath in. And let it all go. Let your body rest. Let your breath relax. Let your mind be here. Doesn't need to be anywhere else. Give yourself a moment to allow your body to download what it just experienced. Give yourself a moment of gratitude for showing up in your body to move today. And on behalf of Black Boys Own, I thank you for taking time to flow with me. I appreciate you taking time to hear the message that Black Boys Home is bringing and supporting the movement and cause of bringing more movement, more mindfulness, more meditation into schools. Thank you for your time today, y'all. Stay here as long as you need. And when you're ready to go, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.